did fewer scale sales and uh, as, as you grew? Because you, you wanted to grow intently. It's a good question. I'd love to say that there's a silver bullet um, and <laughs> put it out there for free, but I think it was a combination of probably two or three, three factors. Um, certainly Fjord was intent on building relationships with clients. So moving away from just a, a single instance, let me build you a X service or let me redesign this particular experience. It was very much building the relationships with the product managers, the product owners, the, the C-suite to the extent that as a small little company, we could actually get to them. But building that ongoing relationship, expanding out from just the here and now, and typically as most people are probably aware, you have clients knocking on the door saying, I want a new app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might be one of the solutions, but actually let's take three steps back and establish if that is part of that solution, let's actually establish what the need, what the problem set is. Um, and then building that into a longer term relationship. I think Fjord was exceptionally successful at that, particularly with companies like Nokia. Um, at the time that that was a um, enduring relationship almost from the year 2000 um, you know, through to you know, well, well, well um, into the years and certainly um, yeah, after after I joined them, so that's yeah, 10, 10 plus years. Um, that was you know that was part of it. Um, you as you would probably expect, the recruitment of business development people. Um, that that was always going to be a little bit trickier because explaining service design is not an easy. Um, it's not an easy task. It's not saying yeah here is an app and this is the functionality and look how great it is. Um, it's very much being able to tell a story confidently. Um, to be able to build those relationships, which gives the confidence to the client that this is the group that we want to work with. Um, we were constantly up against the big players like the Adios and the Frogs, and you know we always used to look at you know look up to Frog, which was a big big company at the time. So th those companies probably opened the door a little bit more for us until we started taking more and more and more of those projects on um, but there would have been an element or there was an element of business development um, capability that we recruited for and it was difficult finding the right one so that we, we traded in we traded out um, but I think what, one of the important elements is it's not just the, the salesperson it's the alignment the collaboration the relationship between the real hardcore experienced designers and the business development teams that could actually work together going two clients together identify what those problem sets were and then collaboratively working out what the solution could or should be next steps at which point business development you know, go to market really steps back a little bit so th those were the early years um i think it became increasingly i think harder as the, the, the market became more and more um it's it there were more players into the market all claiming service design and that's always <laughs> a dangerous statement to say of course we do service design um I think Fjord was very much true to what that actually meant, but it was very much, it was very difficult breaking through through the rest. I think one of the main reasons um, and a huge benefit of aligning with a strategic partner like Accenture was Accenture had, you know, X thousands, you know, uh, Fortune 500 plus, plus, plus type clients, many of which were going through the same challenges of how do I reinvent myself? How do I reimagine our product or our service? And that's really where, the very small little field was able to come in and align with yeah. these kinds of clients. So it, it, it was a, a kind of match made in heaven at the time. Um, and it continues to be, but that was very much yeah. how the business development evolved. Was the uh, strategic partnership uh, well in before the acquisition or was that part of the acquisition strategy? Did you uh, partner with Accenture or did Accenture partner with you prior to the acquisition and then maybe it was working well and then no, and I, I stand corrected, but I'm, I wasn't aware of any work that we had been doing um, specifically with Accenture at the time. Um, having joined the company, we did spend a lot of time working through what our strategic intent was. You know, what, what, what was our North Star? What direction were we going to go in? How did we want to build and grow? And were we going to go and raise another you know, X million pounds in order to build ourselves um, into the next frog but different? Um, or were we going to go and align with a technology company like a, a Cognizant or a TCS? Um, we explored the, the Marcoms worlds, the WPPs, the IPGs, publicists, et cetera. Um, we were just starting to work on, or at least to you know, meet with some of the, the bigger consultancies. Um, and I think what became very, very clear is you know, Raising Cash, the venture capital company that we had behind us was incredibly supportive. And they said they would be there 
if that was the best path. Um, we were nervous about the technology companies because I think technology, being acquired by a technology company would always lead to technology first, as opposed mm -hmm. to design first and technology as a supportive link. And um, to Olaf and credit, uh, Olaf and Mark and Mike's you know, credit, it was always design first. We'll find the technology that will support. So we were nervous about technology, didn't pursue that path. M Mark comes, we, I think we would have been given some fantastic exposure to some exceptional type clients, but I think that was as challenging possibly from a different perspective in that the, the Mark comes agencies were buying a lot of fuel type companies it was it was always going to be very muddy waters you know weaving our way through um to become a leader in that space but it was at that time we had just started considering and being introduced to one or two players at the big consultancies and i think it was at that time that um beji shah accenture interactive um who's who put the strategy together of experience together with with the team at at interactive knocked on our door simply saying you've got an interesting model. We've got you know, a bunch of clients. We're trying to build this capability within Accenture itself. I think Interactive had, had only been going three or four years at the time. Let's have a chat. And I think the, the uh, cultural mindset link um, was almost immediate. Um, it became really clear that with the support of, and I'll use the word protection, because that's important, the protection of Interactive um, that allowed us to come into the group um, gave us a platform from which to build and grow. Um, and I think yeah, all of us will be forever grateful for that opportunity. And I think we've we've had, or Field has had a really good influence back into the broader group. But answer your question, there had almost no work with Accenture beforehand, but it came very clear, very obvious, very quickly, that that was the best strategic partnership to go with. Mm -hmm.